Hello everyone, it's Candidate Master David here, and I just played a horrible game. It was so horrible that I had to make this video to share it with you, and hopefully we can make one or two or even three learning key points and ideas. So I was playing Leeches, I wanted to play a fast time control, but I accidentally played Blitz, which is pretty fast, but I wanted something faster, something bulletish, which I don't recommend by the way, because then you do this type of things. So I was playing with the white pieces here. I'm rated 2400, which is embarrassing. I should be at least 2450. And that's no arrogance. I have been there, but I have just been slacking so much. I've been so lazy and I'm playing without wanting to play. The prime example of that is this game. And my opponent with the black pieces is rated 2300. So you would expect this game to be of certain quality, right? You would expect this game to be pretty good, but you will see. So I opened up with e4, knight of 3, knight c6, everything's pretty normal so far. As the engine points out, bishop b5 seems like a very logical move. But as I said, I'm, I'm just feeling in a very exciting and at the same time, I'm kind of bored. I, sometimes I'm bored of, of, of normal theory chess. So I decided this to play this g4 move, which immediately drops the evaluation from a potential slight plus maybe 0 0.02 0 0.05 to minus 1.2 which is if you're not familiar with the engine and engine evaluation is very bad i'm just losing all my advantage and not only that not only that it's it, it's not even equal it's i'm losing my advantage and i'm giving it to my opponent so my opponent has a big advantage now g4 is a horrible move never play this g3 is acceptable you want to develop like this but g4 is a weakness and my opponent exploits that weakness in a very good well good way with d5. Now it's not only that my opponent is occupying the center, but bishop takes d4 is a threat. E takes d5, I played making my own threat. I mean, I didn't expect my opponent to fall for this, of course. Queen takes d5, I play knight c3, developing my pieces, gaining a tempo. This is still minus one, so black hasn't made any mistake. Queen d8 is the first mistake, but we're not gonna go into that into detail because there's enough crazy things we have to look at in this game. Bishop b5, I play, which is the move I should have played three moves ago before before playing g4 and uh, i'm pretty much developing i lose the pawn on g4 and yeah at some point i have to play rook g1 in fact i should have played rook g1 before bishop b5 but here i go even crazier you know i, I have spent around 10 seconds which is horrible and when i'm well one bad thing you do maybe you do it as well like i do but you do as well and i'm a candidate master i'm not for arrogance but i'm a candidate i, I should be knowing this but I tell you because hopefully it's useful for you. That's why I make these videos, by the way. But okay. I I blundered and instead of pausing for a second and saying, okay, what should I do? How do I make this not such a horrible game? Like, how do I save this? I just go immediately and I go D4. Because I'm 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 knowing like I'm I'm getting a little bit uh, worried, nervous, angry, and I just think, ah, whatever. D4. This is how Magnus does it. This is how Kikar does it. But of course, those guys calculate monst monstrous amount of lines per second. And I, and I, I'm David, and I, I, I like, I like taking my time. So, D E takes D4. Of course, this is even worse than before. It's not only it was it was minus one before this, but now it's minus three point five. So. I'm absolutely losing in this position. And I go ahead and make it even worse. Minus 5 now. So I'm losing even more and more every single move I make. Well, okay. Stick around because the result at the end is not going to be what you think. I take on the queen takes d4 thinking that after bishop takes f3, which is what my opponent played, I have queen e3, giving a check and taking the bishop. But I, I fall into the very simple tactic. Probably you have seen it at home. If not, pause the video. Queen e7. And all of a sudden, I can't take because that's illegal. Uh, as Ben, ben Fangle last like saying, even though I'm a titled player, I can't make a legal move. So I had to castle. The the one of the worst things as well is that I'm trading queens. I can't even keep queens over the board and, and hope for the game to be tricky. I have to do something and then my opponent trades queens. I take with the pawn to be tricky. As I said, I'm playing... Okay, both me and my opponent are playing like right away, which is bad for my opponent. Um, because he should be taking his time to convert this game. But okay, he we're both kind of in this, you know, cycle of bad habits and, and you know, pride and trying to demonstrate something outside the board. 
I don't know. It's just really makes you so ego. Like really forget about arrogance. Just focus on the game because if not, this type of horrible things will happen. But stick around because you still don't know what's gonna happen at the end. Oh, okay. You didn't see anything. Sorry. That was that was a spoiler. Please do not rewind the video. Stick around. Trust me. So. I play King uh, E4, occupying the center, if that makes sense, but it's minus 5, I'm down a piece. Uh, here I play Bishop E4, Knight of 6, this is all kind of being blitzed out, like, we're, we're, we're not spending any time. We still have 2 minutes 46 out of the 3 minutes that we had initially. I play E5, attacking a Knight, very primitive, very, like, horrible. Bishop G5, attacking a Rook, of course my opponent saw it. Like, we're both re playing so such a mechanic mechanical, uh, automatic moves, and then we reach this position into when I go king h3, and this is minus 8. So now black has this forcing sequence of moves of bishop g4. I have to go to the g file. If I go king h4, bishop e7, I can I can resign here. I could resign before. But okay, I'm, I'm hoping for something, king g3. My opponent goes bishop d7. I thought bishop e2 was, was a much easier way of, of taking this point home. But bishop d7, king f4, and here rook g4 is very strong, but my opponent goes bishop d6, drops a little bit of the advantage. Still, it's it's ridiculous, it's minus 6.5, so I'm extremely losing. King e4, rook e8, I go king d5, and this is main in 3. This is forced main in 3. So my opponent in this position had a forced sequence of moves that ended the game in 3 moves. There's nothing I can do to not lose in 3 moves. And that's rook g4. And I saw it during the game, I was getting ready to press the resigning button, or probably I would, I would, I would, have, I would, I would have played something like rook f5 and... Just like absolute bad habit. So this is a very good example. This is the first key point that I want you to learn from my mistakes. Just stop playing when you don't want to play. Like, why, why am I playing this? I, I should have resigned sooner if I wanted to play another game, first of all. But because I'm playing, I'm playing on, that clearly is a sign of someone that just wants to play for tricks and wants to win rather than to be curious. And that's something I've heard many times. I don't know actually who said it first, but you should try to be curious rather than trying to be right. Because if you're trying to be right, you're you're gonna have a tough time. So rook g4, rook e5 is coming, and I have to give. Uh, it's forced checkmate. But my opponent played knight b4, which is a terrible move because it blunders the main e3. It's still fine because it's winning. But after king c4, knight takes e2, rook c1. At least I have a little bit of, you know, more time in this in this board because I'm not losing right away. Go king d3. King b3 is much better, but I'm just trying to keep things complicated by now. Um, we, we still have more than two minutes, which is ridiculous. We, my opponent should have spent a reasonable amount of time before, but he's still playing, like, blitzing out moves. Because we're still trying to demonstrate some pride and some... That, oh, look at me, I'm just blitzing. This is so easy. Like, we, we, us chess players like doing that. We just like thinking, oh, look, look at me, I'm a chess player. I'm, I'm the best human being in the world. Um, don't do that. You're gonna lose many games like that. Just because you're ego, ego egotistical, arrogant. Um, but I'm making this mistake as well, because I'm blitzing out my, my moves. So, I'm not criticizing my opponent so much, I'm criticizing myself more than my opponent. So I play rook f7 now. Now I have some chances, compared to before. And psychologically, this is a very little big win within the war of the game. So, I, I, I was minus 8 at some point. I was checkmate, being checkmate in three moves, and now it's only minus five. <laughs> only minus five. Okay, it's still pretty bad. My opponent finds 95, because I'm threatening to double in the seventh rank, so 95. Uh, I take on h7, I take a pawn. Rook g2, rook f1 was recommended by the engine, but okay, who cares about what the engine says? So I'm just trying to play the most practical, tricky moves over the board, and that was king d4 in my case. This is clearly winning after rook d2, king c4, rook c8. And I was getting ready once again to resign. Um, but my opponent didn't find it. 97. And I live to tell another story another day. 96. King c4. I lose a pawn. But, you know, I'm attacking this. And then all of a sudden, maybe h5. I take on d6. Now, my opponent's advantage is based on the knight and two pawns. So I did a very good job trading pieces. If that makes sense. I went h5, trying to queen that pawn. As I said, everything's very primitive. Trying to queen that pawn, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see any way. Like, I, as soon as I move this rook away, this pawn is gonna fall. So, all of this is just ghosts by my opponent. I think my opponent can start pushing pawns, but he goes uh, rook c8, 
king d4. This is what we know as panic checks. My opponent is just checking because he's in panic and he's hoping for something like king e4 and knight e5. Okay, I, I am I am playing very horribly in this game, but I'm not that bad, right? Um, well, okay, you would be surprised. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. My battery died. So knight g5, attacking my rook. I move my rook g7, hoping that, okay, rook takes h5, which did happen. Maybe some weird things. Everything, I'm, I'm, all the moves I'm making, I'm basing it on what is the scariest move that my opponent could meet. And I'll remind you, my opponent is 2300, which is a pretty high uh, rating um, in terms of how, how these players can, or their potential to convert this game. So in terms of whether my opponent could or could not win this game, I think it's more in the side of, yeah, probably he or she would be able to convert this game. But um, as you will see, after rook d7, rook d5 is a mistake. Rook d d7, I think, is a bigger challenge because I'm threatening to take on b7 on a7. I'm actually threatening to checkmate, but in the event of this rook moving to c2 or something like that, maybe some perpetual or maybe something like rook f8, like there's some infinite checks, right? So my opponent starts giving checks, panic checks again. So my opponent is winning, but he's giving panic checks, he or she. So king e2, check. King f1, this is actually forced checkmate in 6 after rook f3, but my opponent doesn't find it. Rook f8, more panic checks. And after king g2, it's not clear all of a sudden this, this, this rook is attacking this knight. If you move the knight away, this is check. And if you move it somewhere else, this is like... It's a little bit scary. Everything's psychological and my opponent is now 1 minute. <laughs> around 1 minute. He should have used that minute before rather than now, because... Now, maybe it's a little bit more complicated. You know, you only have two pawns and you were used to having a, an enormous advantage. Now, question, David, is this still winning for black? Yes, it is. It's minus four. So black is still winning in this endgame with perfect play. But my opponent is just like, this is the psychology of chess. It's amazing because my opponent was so, in such a winning position, dominating position from before. And now he's just in a, he or she is in a, an endgame with two pawns up. It's a big difference. And that's the psychology of chess. That's the magic of of people like Magnus, world world ex world champion, but still the best chess player in the world right now, um, winning games that are just dead drawn. That's the magic behind that because they're so um, good at making the most of their opponent's weakness inside the board and outside the board. The psychology of it. So I just keep playing. I keep putting rooks. You know, I'm playing king g3. You know, this is definitely objectively still losing, but you I'm, you know what I'm saying. I'm saying, oh, your rook was on b3. Now that your rook left the third rank, now my king is on g3, and that's going to be a big difference. Is that true? No. But this is playing kind of move tricks and uh, mind games with my opponent. So rook b1, I play king g2, rook f7, I play rook g5, and then my opponent goes b5. To which I respond rook g6, and now this is a very big threat, because if my opponent advances the pawn, all of a sudden they're checks. And then, you know, you never know. So, for example, this, let's say I move this and you blunder rook a7, maybe. So, um, you know, I start asking questions. So, rook a8, a1. The computer might say this is minus three and it's an obvious win. But this is the reason why you should not analyze it with a computer. Turn the computer off. Try to win this by yourself against yourself. So, making moves for both white and black. And then you will realize how tough this is or how not easy. Or no, it's not as easy as the computer portrays it to be, at least. The rook a1, I play rook d8. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm just playing around. I'm just playing for for the psychology of it. You know, ah, you never know. Maybe I'm playing rook g8 checks, a5, and then I go back and I realize, okay, well, a6, rook a6 was impossible before because the rook was defending, but now that you've moved the pawn forward, now it will be. And after b4, now I start giving checks. This is now minus two. So from force checkmate in three to force checkmate in 6, to minus 8, to minus 5, now it's minus 2. And my opponent can feel that by evaluating the position. I make a mistake here, rookie 6 was better, rook b5, I'm just making moves quickly, because my opponent is already feeling the, the pressure. My opponent spends 30 seconds, now he has 34 seconds, on the clock, I play king g3. Another 15 seconds, and after king g4, my opponent plays b3. I play this mistake of playing rook c5 followed by rook c6. Threatening, you know, perpetual check, maybe potentially. I was aware of rook a4 and rook b4, but that stuff, okay, that's maybe not easy to find with eight seconds left, which is what my opponent had. My opponent played rook f2, and now this is zero. For the first time in the game, after I played g4, now this is finally 0.0. .0. This is equal. 
because I give check, check, check. And you know, I was I was planning to play for a win because the psycholo psychology part of it is so in high stakes by now that m uh, maybe I'm hoping for a very big catastrophe by my opponent. But okay, I think I don't see any world in which I'm winning this rook to rook endgame. So yeah, of course, I, I think I, I was grateful with what I was given. And the game ended up in a draw. So learning lessons of today. Well, don't play chess when you you're doing it for the rating and you're doing it for for the win so you, if you're not playing because you're curious and you're playing because you just want to win or you just want to be right you just want to prove something that you're the best then stop because odds are that you're just damaging your chest and you will regret it later on um second key point try to save games after you blunder so once you blunder once stabilize yourself so pause for a second ask yourself okay this is not as bad as it could be my initial mistake was minus one if i had stayed you know focused and and paused for a second i may have ended up in a draw but in a in a more objective way maybe i would have won given that my opponent had some chances and they didn't make the most of it all respect to my opponent by the way this is all from a very psychological point of view this is kind of an experiment so you never know so just stabilize yourself and learn and, and, and adapt to the new circumstances, the new position. And I think that's it. If anything else, probably you, you can make a third point out of those two. The game was quite crazy and I'm not proud of it. But I guess, I guess this channel hopes to showcase how chess is in a raw way. The real thing. How I feel. I feel disgusted by that. I must admit, I was pretty happy to get a draw after all that disgustingness. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope that was instructive to some extent. Please consider subscribing and giving a like or watching another of my videos over there or over here. It would really, uh, would really support this channel. And um, let me know if you have any questions down below. <laughs> thank you for watching. Have a nice day.